Pennsylvania essentially anyone can open up a tattoo shop and give you a tattoo or a body piercing without any prior experience or license, and it is entirely legal. Fox 43's Matt Mazel looks into Pennsylvania's unregulated industry and why many have serious health concerns about its future. We're not really putting a label on it like we're a band or anything. Jell Bankert loves making music. And when the muse is tattoo, not everybody uh, should get tattooed. His act is a one man orchestra, hands, fingers, and feet, all working in unison, piecing together a work of art. It's not about looking cool, it's about doing a good tattoo and having an end result that heals correctly and provides a client with a piece of happiness, I guess you could say. Happiness which stays long after the ink dries. It's all infection prevention, man. At York Inc. Tattoos and Piercings. You don't want anybody to uh, cross-contaminate any of their blood with somebody else's. Jow's band box is more like an operating room. A lot of glove changes. Always want to change your gloves a lot. Each session. If you're going to use a bottle like this, you want to cover it up. Jow takes 20 to 30 minutes just setting up. Lots of paper towels, lots of gloves. Each step. Lots of glove changes. You always want to be changing your gloves, man. Like a doctor going into surgery. Going under. Well, snap, shoot. Everything's separated. You don't want to. You don't want anything to, to uh, end up touching each other, especially if you're gonna cross contaminate. Jow keeps it clean, even when he doesn't have to. That's because Pennsylvania's tattoo industry is unregulated. No experience needed to open a shop. No inspectors coming to make sure it's clean. Bloodborne pathogen, uh, some some type of disease. Uh, there's a ton of different things that could happen. Pennsylvania is one of just 10 states plus Washington, D.C., with no laws regulating tattoo facilities. In fact, the Commonwealth's only tattoo law, or shops can't give tattoos to kids under 18 years old without a parent present and giving consent. It's essentially tattooing's version of the wild, wild west. It's almost inevitable in a state with, um, with no regulation to have scratchers. Scratchers are amateur tattoo artists. Some call them basement tattooers. It's entirely legal here in Pennsylvania, and at least one lawmaker in Harrisburg has been trying to change that for the last two decades. Makes no sense. Words of exasperation from Pittsburgh area Democrat Tony DeLuca. Each session since 2001, nine in all, DeLuca's proposed legislation to regulate tattoo and body piercings. All licensed shops would be subject to Department of Health inspections as well. That's not something controversial. I mean, if that was a case, let's do away with all the licenses. Let's, why should a barber have a license? Why should a hairdresser? This year, after 18 years of trying, DeLuca's bill finally made it out of the House, an overwhelming 173 to 17 vote. It was referred to the Senate Health and Human Services Committee in April, though in seven months it was never taken up. Fox 43 reached out to committee chair Senator Lisa Baker. Her chief of staff emailed us back. We ran out of time, she said. It'll need to be reintroduced. It wasn't on their radar screen. It's not on their radar screen because I have a lot of people screaming for it. The way I see this bill, it's going to be a way for the, for the legislators to make some money and some revenue. Paul Sorrells says some in the tattoo industry believe DeLuca's bill doesn't go far enough. Sorrells runs Razorblade Pro, a tattoo and piercing supply distribution warehouse in Harrisburg. So you'll find tattoo needles, tattoo needle cartridges, um, tattoo machines, tattoo machine parts. He's been in the business for 20 years. The ultimate way, in my opinion, to do it would be to legislate the suppliers because it's the access to the supplies that allow them to do what they do. So you guys, right? you, would, you wouldn't have a problem? I'm already doing it. Sorrells self-regulates. If you're not in the business, you're not getting in here. If they walk in the door and we don't know who they are, the first question is, what shop do you work at? And then from there, we're going to do our online research. We're going to ask them for some kind of proof that they are working in a studio. And if we can't confirm it, we won't sell to them. Any law, Sorrells tells me, should be going after amateur artists. How many tattoos uh, have you gotten in the shop? None of them. Which would directly impact customers like Kwame Jackson of York. I got this one on my hand last night. Kwame has 18 tattoos. This was a few months ago, memorial for a friend of mine that passed away from the opioid epidemic. Sleeves on both arms, each one done by who he calls basement artists. I think it is kind of an underground thing. Like you gotta know a guy who knows a guy for sure. It seems kind of shady though. Um, it is a little bit shady. Shady, but worth it. Kwame says a $1,000 professional tattoo can cost him less than 200 bucks on the street. I do think that if they make regulations, they put a lot of people out of a job and poverty only causes more crime. That's the tough part. 
you, uh, you don't know what you're getting into if you're getting tattooed at somebody's house. Jow Bankard has been there. In reality, it's actually <laughs> horrible. <laughs> he got his start scratching tattoos and now just wants to scratch amateurs out of the business. People that are on that side, they don't know that they're doing wrong. Most of them, because they don't have anybody there to tell them they're doing wrong or to, to show them the right way. It's not for everybody. This is a lifestyle and you got it's something you have to commit to. Matt Mazel, Fox 43 News. Now, Fox 43 asked the Pennsylvania Department of Health if it had a stance on the state's tattoo industry being unregulated and if they had concerns over the lack of inspections. They would only say they do not comment on pending legislation.